So I'm back with the Roadcaster video, and in this video, I wanted to talk all about graphics and video playback. One of the big advantages of this live stream switcher over other switchers is that the files are saved internally to a micro SD card that I've inserted into the slot in the back of the switcher. So I wanted to show you real quick how I bring those graphics in and videos in and how that works as far as calling up those videos for playback. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect the Rodecaster video to my computer. I'm using the USB-C connection out of USB number two, going right into the device. And then I can see my Rodecaster video in the Rode Central application. Now, when I'm adding in all of these graphics, I wanna go into the scene builder. The scene builder is kind of like your interface with the device. And that's where a lot of this stuff is gonna happen. So for right now, I've got this micro SD card that I've added media to. So you can see here this add media button is how I bring in media from my computer. So here's just a, a random graphic that I happen to have here. I'm gonna open this up. And when I open that, that gets added to this media library. And then you can see that graphic right in here. Now from that place, I want to choose whether or not this should get added to the media or the overlays. Now think of overlays as like your lower thirds where they have transparent background versus media can be video or full screen graphics. So I'm going to activate that media tab right here. It's this button at the top or I can go over here and press the media button. Once I'm in the media pool, so to speak, or the media library, I can see existing media on my multi-view. So right now I've got a full screen graphic in A, a video in B, and two graphics in D and E. Now those graphics are actually for scenes later, so we're gonna delete them. I'm gonna go into D right here. I'm going to hit delete, and this is how you remove it from that assigned button. Same thing here with E, delete. So now I have two graphics. I have this starting soon graphic and I have this video playback where I can choose whether it plays once or it will loop if I choose so. So to get those in here, like let's say I wanted to assign something to C, here's this video again. I can click and drag it and when I hover over C, you'll see it changes to a plus sign. I just drop it right in and now that video has been assigned to the C button. If I wanted to, because I assigned it to both B and C, Maybe C is my looping version of it and B is my play at once version of it. And you can do that with the same media. So you can duplicate that with your buttons, especially on videos like this. If I'm bringing in a full screen graphic, for example, the A button, which has this starting soon graphic, I'm just gonna delete it. So now there's nothing here. Well, I've imported this graphic already to the media library. So it's already on the micro SD card that's in the device. All I need to do is click and drag this over to the A button and it will add that immediately. If I put it on the wrong button, I can reassign it by clicking reassign and it shows me which buttons are available to reassign it to. So let's just say D is where we wanna reassign it and boom, you'll see it switched from A to D. So we've got that full screen graphic. If I wanted to take it, I'll hit that D button to bring it into the preview. And then I can either press auto to fade it in, or if I press a hard cut, it will be a hard cut back to preview. Now the video side is pretty much the same thing. So I've got my video in B, that one was set to play one time through. So I'm going to put B into preview. And then once I hit that play button, which is going to be the auto or the cut, it's going to auto play. So there's no actual play button. It's just auto or cut brings it into program and it starts playing. What I like about this multi viewer is you will see a status bar of how much time is left on that video so that you can time it out to cut back to your live shot. So here we go. I've got 17, 18 out of 24 seconds, three, two, one, and we're out. I fade back to my live shot. So it's really nice and easy to see how much time is left on that video. And that video will autoplay audio as well. We can adjust that audio level. You can see the, the video audio levels here in the multi-viewer. I can adjust that here in the Rode software. So if I go to audio mixer and then video clips, I can tweak the levels on that as needed. So I just brought this one down two and a half dB. And then if I play it again, so we've got it in preview already. We're gonna, let's go with the looping one. So that's on C and then I'm gonna bring it up and it will bring that audio 
live and I can also see the audio levels on the video. So if I wanted to tweak that even further, I could bring that down even more if I need to right in the audio mixer tab here. And I can see those levels translate over here for both the video signal and what's actually going out live. Now you see how much time is left because this one is set to loop. It's got a looping icon on the multi-view screen. So it's just going to continuously loop until we are done. Once we want to kick out of that, I can auto fade back to whatever's in preview and then it will fade out the music as well. So that's how we bring up a video or a graphic. Now that's if we're bringing up what I would consider to be full screen images, right? So the, the starting student graphic, that's a full screen image. Same thing with the video, that's a full screen. You wanna use your overlays section. So right now media is highlighted. We'll kick out of media and over to the overlays section for transparent graphics like a lower third. So in this case, I go back into my scene builder. I would add media if I have a lower third graphic. In this case, I already brought it in, but you can see I can just import it here. And when I hit open, it'll import it again. And now that I've got it in here, we can just click and drag it over to whatever icon we want. So I'm in that overlay section. I can confirm that on the multi view. I can confirm because the button is lit up. I can also see it over here in the software. Okay, so if I have my image here and my lower third is selected and I go to size and position, I get a boundary box and I can click and drag this to resize this as needed. You'll see it will resize as I let go and release of the box. I can also move this as needed within this window. So as needed, we can adjust that size. We can also type this in. So you've got some numbers here. So if I need to change the width back to 1920 by 1080, we could do that. Uh, or I can just click and drag this guy back up and position it exactly where it needs to go. So that resizing happens here. So let's say, let's, let's go a little smaller on this one. Okay, we've got that, that's ready to go. Now I can see my graphic resizes in real time right here. If I wanna turn that off, let's just switch between our camera feeds. So we're switching, we're switching. And then we wanna take our graphic, we can bring it up by hitting the A button because we are in that overlays mode. So that's how you would bring up a transparent graphic. Now, one question that might come up for you is can I fade that graphic onto screen? Cause right now it really is just a hard cut as I select it. The answer is not at this time, but I have reached out to Rode and let them know that a very common feature of lower thirds and overlays like that is that we can fade them onto screen so it's not as hard of a cut. So they do know about that, they are aware, and I believe that they will consider implementing an adjustment for us so that we can have that capability at a later time. But for right now, it is just a hard cut when you bring that on screen and off screen. And again, that's in the overlays section. If I'm doing my full screen graphics, I go into the media section and I'm back to my videos again. When you put that video into preview, it won't play until you take it into program. Same goes for the full screen graphics. I can put those in a preview and then take them to my live stream. So that is an overview of using videos and graphics on the Rodecaster video. There's a lot more to learn with the Rodecaster video software. I'm still learning my way around it as I'm building out these scenes and creating these graphics. But as you can see, it's pretty darn simple to jump into and learn in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe. And then down below in the comment section, I wanna open up a conversation with you about this device, about your thoughts, and maybe any features that you might be considering because we can let Rode know about that and then maybe they will want to add those at a later time. Thanks for watching. See you next time.